morning and welcome to the Addition Financial Webinar, our new bill pay system. Our speakers, Nora Rodriguez-Patterson and Rachel Nelson, are sharing their expertise today from project management and IT, respectively. Feel free to type your questions in the chat box, and we will answer them during our Q&A session towards the end of the presentation. And now I'll hand it over to Nora. Good morning. It is so good to be here. I am Nora Rodriguez-Patterson. Good morning. This is Rachel Nelson. And we are just really excited about the new bill pay system. Uh, we had a conversion this past weekend. But before we get to the demo, I would like to emphasize some portions uh, of the information that was previously shared to make sure that we have a really good foundation. So let's begin with our communication plan. We used multiple channels in order to announce the change. We included information in our monthly statement. We um, uploaded information on our website. We sent emails to our members. And we also uh, mailed a postcard, which you will see on the left-hand side and the beautiful monitor uh, showcasing the beautiful turquoise blue. Not only we added a website banner, but we also included in our website resources to make sure that everybody was aware of the upcoming change and the details. Uh, we included FAQs and we also have tutorial videos that are very brief and very targeted to the action that you're trying to complete. So at most, I think the longest video that we have, it's probably three minutes, um, but it's really comprehensive and it's really on target. So even if you are not able to capture everything that it's being shared throughout all the different channels of communication, you always have a resource that you can fall back to so that you can replay and learn at your own pace. Now, there are some specific information that we really want to um, highlight as we entered uh, this phase of the discussion. Um, for check payments, we want to make sure that you review everything that has uh, come over. So review to make sure that all of your payments came in, review to make sure that if it was set up as a one-time, that it continues to be a one-time payment, that if it was set up as a recurring payment, that it continues to be a recurring payment. You just want to be thorough about that review process to make sure that everything that you had before came in. However, there is a catch to that. If you had any person-to-person -person payments, those did not come over. So it wasn't that the data got lost, it was intentional, it was for security purposes. So the person-to-person -person payments must be rescheduled. And then if you are a business member, you will no longer be able to use the person-to-person -person functionality. In addition, on the check payments, we want to make sure that you know some major differences. Moving forward, the check payment, it's going to have your routing number and your account number. It's no longer gonna be coming from the institution, from Addition Financial, but it's actually gonna look like as if you wrote that check. The funds for that payment are going to be deducted from your account once the recipient cashes that check. Now, in the event that you don't have funds at the time that that check gets presented, you may be charged a courtesy pay fee or an insufficient funds fee, depending on where you are. Now, let's pretend worst case scenario. Your merchant tells you, I have not received the check, I have not received your payment, and you know that you already went through the motions, you used bill pay, and you sent the payment. You actually have the flexibility now to place the stop payment on your own without going to the branch or reaching out to the contact center. And you're able to place that stop payment and then resend the payment so that once again, your creditor is happy. This is going to be something that Rachel is going to disclose in greater detail as we actually go through the demo. Now for electronic payments, we received feedback that some electronic payments came over as checks, and we knew that that was going to happen. There are two main reasons why those electronic 
uh, payments came in as checks. The first one is if the account number doesn't match the electronic payment format. The second reason is that maybe the address doesn't match the electronic payee information. So the one thing that remains the same is that the money is going to be deducted out of your account when the payment is sent. Now, what can you do about the fact that you truly believe that those payments should be electronic? This is where your billing statement becomes the source of truth. You want to look at that billing statement. You want to see the account number. You want to see the address that it uh, is included in there. And you want to match that the information from your billing statement is what you actually have entered in the bill pay system. If it's not, take the time to update it. And most likely the problem is going to be resolved. Now, during the registration process, many of you submitted questions. So Rachel and I are going to take the time right now to answer some of these questions as our producer, Nicole, gets ready to transition to the demo environment. All right, so Rachel, first question. Will you cover the order of transactions under the new system? Transfers in, transfers out, recurring bills paid, one-time bills paid, checks written, et cetera. This has been confusing over the last couple of system replacements. Yeah, so we do our best uh, to cover transactions in the order they're presented for payment. Uh, if you schedule several bill payments to be processed on the same day, they will process in the order that they were scheduled. Uh, we do our best as an organization to post electronic deposits ahead of our withdrawals every day. Uh, the daily cutoff time for setting up your bill payments is 3 p.m. Then the bill pay system will process the withdrawals for electronic payments and check pay or electronic payments daily after 5 p.m. As Nora mentioned, the checks are going to come directly out of your account when the merchant processes it. This gives you as much time as possible to cover these transactions and still process them on the same day without overdrawing your account. You can also set up an alert in our bill pay system as a reminder that payments are scheduled if you set them up ahead of time. Uh, for the most up-to-date information, Nora, you can always go to online or mobile banking and check your balances to make sure there's enough money to cover it. Good point, good point. All righty, next question. Can I opt out and not pay a penalty for using it? Yep, so that's a, a change with our new system as well. If you're not going to use the new bill pay system, of course, you should deactivate the service. However, there is not an inactivity fee if you do not actively pay bills. Yeah, and our fee schedule was updated for that, so we can definitely confirm that information. Um, so the next question is, will I lose my current history of payments that I schedule each month? So we did not bring over the bill pay history in this new bill pay view. However, any paid bills still display in your account history. So nothing better than that monthly statement that I can refer back to and always know what has transpired in the past. Or my favorite, logging into online or mobile banking and checking those transactions as they post real time. Options are available, whatever works best for you. Um, so the next question is, can I use this channel to pay what I owe to you? So this question comes up quite a bit. And the best way to pay your addition financial loans is through <coughs> online banking transfers. Uh, this is the most efficient and fastest way to pay the bills. All righty. Next question. Will my bills be paid with old bill pay this month? So that's a good question. As Nora mentioned in the beginning, all the bills that were set up that came over to the new bill pay, with the exception, of course, of person to person, uh, are going out. And all the bills set up in the old bill pay system that were set up prior to Friday were paid. Everything that is scheduled ahead of that is processing in our new system. Um, and should have transferred over. So double check, uh, log in and double check to make sure it's there. But yes, everything we had data for came over. Um, this one is actually a rather interesting question because this one says, are there any bills that 
cannot be paid using bill pay? Yeah, we get this one uh, quite a bit as well. Most payments that you wish to pay through online banking are are allowed. Uh, it must be in U.S. dollars and made payable to a, a merchant or a person located in the U.S. Uh, we do recommend that you do not pay the the following types of of bills or uh, items: tax payments, anything that's court ordered, such as child support or payments to settle security transactions. This is really because of the amount of additional information that's required for those payment types. And you really don't want to mess with the IRS. You really don't want to mess with the court system. There are some steep consequences when that happens. And so um, it is best if you use another channel in order to pay those very sensitive uh, payment types. All right. So the next question, can I pay with my debit card from different bank? Ooh, this is a good one. So you have been asking for this for quite a while, Addition Financial members. Uh, so stay tuned. This is on our payment uh, roadmap. So later this year, it might be coming soon. Yes. <laughs> I'm working on that one. So I can reassure you that, yes, it is on our, on our roadmap. Yeah. And um, the last question that we're going to do for this session before we transition to the demo, it's the most important question to me. Will this be a secure site? Absolutely. Your financial security is one of our top priorities. So with that being said, we are going to transition to the demo. And so we will go through the entire demonstration and then we will come back and open the floor for questions. Current and previous versions of major browsers such as Microsoft Edge, Google Chrome, Safari, and Firefox. So today for our example, we're going to be using Chrome. I'm just going to throw them, okay? On Bill. So while our producer is actually trying to resolve some uh, technical situations that we have with audio, um, we're going to continue getting some of the uh, questions answered. And so the first question is, I had a recurring payment to my mortgage company that did not get transferred. What is the solution for this? Uh, the best thing you can do is give us a call to the contact center or go ahead and send us a secure message through online banking. That'll give our team an ability to research uh, what might have happened with your payment. In the meantime, the best thing to do is to go ahead and set it up again uh, in the new bill pay system. Thank you. And then the next question is, is there a, P, um, a fee for the stop payment? Uh, there is. So if you go to our fee schedule, uh, there is a fee to place a stop payment, uh, and that'll be updated there. Okay. The next one is, I had a person-to-person -person payment that was previously going out electronically. It now looks like it's going to be sent as a check. How can I make P2P payments electronic? So in our new bill pay, the pay a person or send money option allows you to send it to a person. And the only option is for them to accept it electronically. Uh, so the recipient will log in and enter their account information or their debit card in order to receive the funds from you. Uh, if we need to go into a little bit more specific and take a look at your account, I encourage you to send a message through secure messaging and online banking or calling the contact center going into a branch. Yes, the information, um, our, our commitment to having all of your information secure, it's very important. So we wanna make sure that we don't um, get into too much details where the information is compromised. Um, so the next question that we have is, Will it be safe sending my account and routing number to a payee? Sending your account information to a payee. So in this case, I, I'm going to take a leap here and assume you're talking about giving your account information to a biller instead of sending it through bill pay. Uh, and so in most cases, most billers have uh, some 
security set up on their side. But if you're worried about security on the biller side, the best thing you can do is initiate that transaction from Addition Financial's bill pay. Um, okay. The next question, and we are taking them live, so just forgive us as we try to decipher the best way to answer um, all of your questions, is how do I get the bill pay screen to close when I sign off? It did not close on my internet screen, even though I logged out. I am going to guess that you're using the mobile app and launching bill pay from an Apple device or an iPhone. Uh, we did have um, this come up where it's launching in a Safari browser instead of within the app. And we are working diligently to, to correct how that launches. Um, in that case, you can just close the browser window down and uh, it, it should close out the session. So this one is actually a multiple question, multiple part question. So how can I tell if a payment is electronic or check? And then how can I tell if it's recurring or single payment? That's a good question. Um, there are two different icons that indicate how your payment is going out to the payee. Uh, one of them is the lightning bolt, and that is what indicates that it is an electronic transaction. Uh, the other icon looks like a, an envelope or a check, uh, and, and that's what indicates that it's going out by by check through the USPS mailing system. Okay, and somebody just needs confirmation. Is there a cost for bill pay? <laughs> <laughs> we are happy to share that there is no cost for using this service at at, at its core, right? So uh, there's no monthly fee. There's no inactivity fee. The only fees you might get is if you make an oops in your account, but that is separate from bill pay. And by oops, I mean, it didn't have enough to cover. It says, earlier it was mentioned that the check payments are paid upon the recipients processing the payment. Please explain how the delivery date is decided. Hmm. Okay, that's a good question. So in most of our studies, uh, we've seen that the post office is able to uh, deliver the check payments within five days or less. So that's how we're calculating the delivery date for check payments. Uh, hopefully it's sooner, but we all know what's been happening with the Postal Service the last few months. It's been a little bit delayed, um, but even still, we've done some testing and it's been about five days. Technology, it's always amazing. So with that in mind, we're just going to continue our questions. And the next one is going to be, how many digits are allowed in the payment field? That is an interesting question. And <laughs> I would have to type it in and test that out. I'll get back to you. Whoever sent that one, good job in stumping us. Yeah, it was phenomenal. <laughs> I mean, do you want to pay my bills? <laughs> okay. Um, the next question is, can I have the payees listed according to my nickname rather than the name of the credit card company? So uh, the payees are listed in alphabetical order. Uh, you, you, while you can add a nickname and that's what should be displaying, um, I believe the ordering uh, is based on the, the actual vendor or merchant's name. Uh, so at this time, no, but that's, that's an interesting request for an enhancement. I can take that back. Yeah, I, I like it because, you know, I... I definitely feel more comfortable with my nickname rather than the official name of, of the merchant. Yeah, I think I'd rather see internet instead of spectrum. I get that. Yes. Um, this one is, um, I know that the answer is yes, but I'll let you get into the details. <laughs> Can I select multiple payees, then enter each amount, then order them all activated? Yesterday, it seemed like I had to enter each payment, then start all over for the next payment. Ah, uh, okay, yes. So when we get into the demo, we'll go through uh, a process where you can pay one at a time, or there's a screen where you can pay all of them at a time, and then within each of the pay payment options, 
uh, you can set them up to be a one-time or a recurring. And, and we'll get into that when we get into the demo. Um, so those are all the questions that we have received um, as of right now. Um, we are checking with our IT area and they're giving us the signal that hopefully within the next five minutes, we will have our audio issue resolved. Um, so if you wanna continue sending your questions ahead of time, we will absolutely continue answering them on the spot. Um, but Rachel, just uh, for, for the sake of our members about how many bill pay members do we have at additional finance, addition financial? Uh, yeah, so we had approximately 17,000 active bill pay users uh, when we converted over the weekend, which is, is pretty awesome. That represents about 20% of you that, that use our online banking system. So that's fantastic. Okay, so we have a new question and it says, where can I see my recurring monthly payments in bill pay? Yeah, that's a great question. So they are set up in uh, the calendar view um, on the first dashboard screen. Uh, and every month that a payment is scheduled will show up in the upcoming month. Uh, the other way to tell is there's an activity tab at the top of the bill pay screen as well. Or if you're on the mobile device, when you're going through the menu, you can scroll down to the activity screen and it will list out all of your current and past payments. So you can tell whether that's recurring and then the next date that the payment is scheduled to process. So what is your favorite feature about bill pay? Oh, my favorite one is paying a bunch of bills all at once <laughs> <laughs> and being able to set them up recurring and remind me that I set up a recurring bill. Um, I am a, a single mom and so I don't have a lot of time to get in and mess with my bills as they come up. So uh, for me, my favorite, my favorite screen is to, to get in, pay all my bills and get out. You know, with P2P, there is uh, a new uh, um, functionality for the recipient. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So we were really excited to be able to offer this. Um, you know, you've probably used other P2P or person-to-person -person payments before. You've heard of them out on the marketplace. There's PayPal, uh, Chase, Zelle, just to name a few. Uh, so we were when we were able to offer a, a faster way for your recipient to receive the money. Uh, so now, in addition to being able to enter their account information, like their bank's routing number and their account number at their financial institution, they also have the option to enter their debit card information. And what that does is it allows the payment to get to them faster. Uh, the, the other option they have with our new system is to be able to set up a remember me. So just like you and I have it set up, because I tend to forget my wallet quite a bit and Nora <laughs> saves me <laughs> um, and picks up the check. Uh, she can set it up to accept that from, from me on a recurring basis and get her money faster. And I appreciate you sending me my money. <laughs> <laughs> and I always appreciate you picking up the tab when I do forget. Um, can you rename a current payee? You can rename a current payee's nickname. The way that the name displays uh, for the payee is how the merchant has, the merchant or the, the payee has their name listed in the electronic payment processing system. So that part cannot be edited, but you but you are able to update the nickname, which uh, shows in parentheses next to the payee name. Now this question is specific to uh, Safari browser users. Mm. How secure is my account with the screen staying open? It's, it's still secure. So even if the screen stays open, as long as you don't walk away from your computer which or phone, which I hope nobody does and leaves it unlocked, um, Security 101, um, your, your information is still secure. No one else can access that link. Uh, no one can hack into it. Um, it. It is still secure. But we do advise you close the browser out when you're done uh, paying your bills. Okay. Um, the next question is, will I be able to change my billing date through the app? I used to have to log in from my laptop in order for me to make the change. Yep. So the, this, uh, this does work in, uh, inside of our app. Uh, 
as we've been mentioning for iPhone or Apple users, uh, it does launch into a Safari browser, but it is, you are able to uh, use it in, in the app and Android works within the app as well. Will the reference number always be that long? That is a good question. I, I'm The reference number is between you and us in order for us to find the, the payment processing information a little bit faster. Uh, but I, I would say it's probably going to remain that, that long or longer as, as we increase. I can't the number of payments. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that they're unique. Um, these, are these, these members have interesting questions. They are educated. Yes, they, they have. You guys are their, great. They have definitely their, their ducks in a row. Yep. Okay. So routing number. Mm-hmm. Is the routing number on the upper left of the full screen the full routing number? In online banking, yes. Um, and our routing number, just in case you guys were wondering, is 263-181-384. That was something I learned very quickly being it being an employee. Yes, and as a former contact center employee, I can tell you that we say that over and over and over again. Yes. It's just music for us. Uh, we actually, that's how we learned it. We created a little <laughs> three, one, eight, one, <laughs> three, eight, four. So will you have fingerprint access to account? Um, I'm, I'm guessing this is about a touch ID or the, the fingerprint authentication or face ID uh, through um, a, a device that has that enabled on it. And so the answer is yes, we have had that uh, for quite a while in our mobile app. Um, so as long as you have it enabled on your device, on your mobile device, uh, you are able to utilize that for our app as well. It take There's a couple more steps to set it up in the app because we want to make sure that you want to enable it. Um, and we have some videos on YouTube that walk you through how to do that. Um, there is a question from someone about Verizon. If, if it would be, um, I'm, I'm gonna humbly ask that they restate the question. It's a bit abbreviated, and so I'm, I'm having um, a little bit of a hard time deciphering how to properly uh, phrase it. Um, but if if you are this Verizon member that, that had a question and you can elaborate, that would be lovely, and we will do our very best to answer the questions on the air. Um, the next question is, is the calendar date shown next to the payment, the date sent or when the payee will receive the payment? Mm, that's a good question. So there's a couple of dates uh, that are available for you to <clears throat> look at uh, in the bill pay system. Uh, the first date is the send on date, depending on which payment date option you have selected. Uh, the send on date is the date that the funds are removed from your account for processing. The delivery, and that's an electronic. Uh, the delivery date is the date that the funds are going to make it to the merchant or the payee. Um, the only exception to that is, like Nora mentioned earlier, is with checks. Uh, the, the send on date is the date that the check is processed and sent to the merchant. And then the delivery date is the date that we estimate, we said about five business days, that the USPS will uh, go ahead and deliver that to the merchant. Now, when your check actually processes is still up to the merchant that received it. Okay, so the next question is, Will there be any change to auto draft payments previously set up through a company, such as my cell phone company? Hmm. Yep. So if you've already provided your account information to a merchant and you did not previously use bill pay to do that, this change is not affecting those types of payments. Um, the next question is, do I need to have the app now to use bill pay? So you need to have a login to our online banking 
system. Uh, so you need to have set up online banking previously and, and downloaded the app in order to, to log in, but you can use it from the web. You don't have to have the mobile app uh, to utilize our, our bill pay system. If I have something automatically coming out of my account, can it be set up through bill pay? Yeah, you can definitely uh, cancel that auto draft with with the merchant if you've had it set up that way and then re-enable it through the new bill pay system. Is there a minimum number of accounts in order to open bill pay? A minimum number. Oh, a minimum number of payees, I'm I'm guessing. I'm saying yeah, minimum. I I, I am guessing that our um audience member is wanting to know if they have to have like a minimum number of bills that they have to pay in order to use bill pay. Yeah, no, you can pay, you can use it with as little as one. You don't even have to pay necessarily a bill. You could utilize it just for the person to person uh, transfer of money. And so now I'm getting the green signal from our IT department that our audio issues have been resolved. So we're gonna pause our questions. We're gonna go through the demo and we will come back to the open forum again. Here on my mobile banking site. You'll see it here at the, top, the third button, Bill Pay. One quick note about the technology we support the current and previous versions of major browsers such as Microsoft Edge, Google Chrome, Safari, and Firefox. But today, for our example, we're going to be using Chrome. The first time you'll select bill pay after February 8th, you will be presented with our updated terms and conditions. This might be the most exciting thing you read this year. After you've read through the updates, you will need to select the box to accept the terms and conditions at the bottom. Once you accept, you will launch into our updated bill pay. But if you choose to decline, please note that you won't be able to access bill pay. From here, the new bill pay home screen will launch. And you'll notice the updated layout and design. You'll see here at the top that there are four icon options that are called dashboard, pay bills, send money, and activity. Then below those icons, there's a quick pay section, and this allows you to select a single payee to initiate a payment. Get in, pay, and get out. So payment history did not transfer to this view that you see when you log in. However, any paid bills will display in your account history. The area below quick pay right here will display upcoming scheduled payments. And if you don't have any payments scheduled, then this will be blank. On the right-hand side, you'll see this menu um, and this is a view that defaults to a list of existing payees. So don't be fooled. There may only be four payees showing here, but trust me, my payee list is long and there is no limit. So each payee has either a lightning bolt or an envelope icon next to it on the left-hand side. The lightning bolt indicates that the payee accepts electronic payments. And then the envelope icon indicates that the payee will be mailed a check. There are other options for e-bills and a new option also to add payee groups, which we'll get into. Let's talk about how to add a new payee. And when I mentioned I pay everything in our bill pay, I really meant it. From the quick pay dropdown, you can select to make a payment to an existing payee by selecting them from your list that shows up, or you can add a new payee. You can also add a new payee from the right-hand side view under payees, and then you'll select add. Adding a payee is done in a three-step process, super easy. The first thing you'll put in is the payee name, then below that you'll add details, and then after that is the confirmation. When we're adding the payee name, what you'll do is you'll just start typing it in and you'll see if that payee appears in the list and then you'll select it and click continue. So you'll see here we've typed in Bank of America 
And we do have that as an option. So I would just click that and then click continue to move forward. If your payee does not display in this list, then it means that they're not set up to accept electronic payments and they'll receive a check instead. These check payees will require more information to set up than you'll see here. All right, next we are headed to add details. So for a payee that appears in the list like Bank of America did, you'll only need to be required to enter two pieces of information. We require the account number and a confirmation of that account number. And this number should be on your billing statement. And then we also require the payee zip code. And this should be from the payment address on your billing statement. The other fields are optional. So at this point, you can select go back to return to step one, or once the required information has been entered, you can just proceed to step three by clicking on continue. Once we've clicked that, you'll see we're getting a pop-up here. There's a new feature for electronic payees. So a validation process happens in real time when you're setting up a new payee. If we are unable to match that account number and zip code for the electronic payee, then we will alert you like you'll see here. I would definitely go back to the billing statement and just confirm the account number and zip code with the bill to make sure everything's correct. You can continue and then set up the payee to receive payments by check. So for check payees, there's a little bit more information required to be able to mail the check payment. So for the payment address, this is also found on your billing statement. So you'll fill out all of the required information and any of the optional information that you would like, and then you'll click continue to move forward. So from here, you're gonna get a confirmation. This is going to um, allow you to review all of the payee information entered. So if you need to make changes, now's your chance. And you can do so by selecting edit payee at the bottom. But if the information is correct, you'll select OK to confirm that everything is good to go. Once you've done that, you'll see a confirmation message. And then your new payee will display over here on the right hand side in the payee list and also in the quick pay dropdown. So to make a payment using the quick pay tool, what you'll do is you'll just select the payee from the dropdown list here, and then you'll select which account you want to pay from. You'll see a dropdown menu if you do have more than one eligible checking account to choose from. But if you only have one checking account, it will be auto-selected for you. You'll also notice that your current balance will display, which is helpful as well. At the bottom here, we have a couple of date options. The send date is the date that the money will be debited from your account during payment processing. Then we have the delivery date here, which is the estimated date that the payment will arrive to the payee for their processing. You can select either date and the other date will update automatically. Electronic payments will be delivered within one business day. Check payments may take up to five business days to be delivered, depending on the USPS mail delivery time. So after selecting a date, you'll want to enter the amount for the payment, and then you'll also select a frequency. So if you want this payment to happen just once, you'll select that monthly, et cetera. The second alert me option at the bottom here is only available when the send date is in the future. And these alerts are sent via email. As an example, if you set this up far in advance and you wanna be reminded before it's sent, you can select that box there and pick how many days prior you wanna be alerted before it sends that money. So after you confirm that the payment was scheduled, that new payment will appear in the scheduled payment calendar right here. So the default view for this calendar is a list view. 
However, if you select this calendar icon here at the top, it'll display a calendar view of upcoming payments. You can also adjust it back to the list view by then selecting the list icon in the same spot. You also have the ability to switch between send on and delivery date using this toggle slider right here. So this will allow you to see all of the dates that you're sending money on versus all of the dates that your money is being delivered on. Okay, let's explore pay bills. This is my personal preference when making payments because I like to get them in, pay or schedule everything at once, and then just get on with my day. So the pay bills tab displays all payees in a list view and it will allow you to make several payments at once, which is super helpful. This new option to the right also displays any upcoming payments. This way you can view all of your upcoming payments while you're scheduling your new ones. And I know for me, this really helps to make sure that I don't pay the same bill twice or that I can see what's coming up so I can make sure I'm adjusting my payments accordingly. You'll see here that it'll default to the next 30 days, but you can change that super easily by just clicking on this drop down here. You'll notice that each payment will need a payment amount, a date, and a pay from account selected if you have more than one account to choose from. And you'll also need to enter in a frequency. For anything other than one time, you'll need to make sure that you have the appropriate selection for the recurrence. Once you've completed all your payments as desired, you will see a total of all the payments scheduled. Once you've confirmed that everything's good, you'll just click on continue to display a confirmation of the payment. Then once you've confirmed it, you'll click on pay. From here, you should see a success message that will appear at the bottom, and then you'll see the payments displayed in the payment section on the pay bill screen. So the last icon we have at the top that we'll be exploring is called activity. In this section, you can search for any payment made in bill pay and you can also see the status. So this screen is super useful when looking at a historical view of your payments as well as any upcoming payments you may have. You can also search here at the top for a specific payee on a date range or use the filters to narrow down your search even further. So there are quite a few different statuses you may see, but the most common ones are canceled, failed, in process, pending, and delivered. So canceled will show if you've canceled this previously scheduled payment or the recipient did not accept the payment. You might see the failed message if something during the processing caused the payment not to process. Sometimes we see this because there was not enough money to cover the payment amount available when the payment attempted to process. Then we have in process, which will show if the payment request is processing and cannot be edited. This will tell us that the request to withdraw the funds has already been made and the payment is ready to send to the payee. Then the pending status shows that the payment is scheduled for a future date and this status is where you can still make changes to the payment if necessary. And then finally, delivered. Delivered will show that your payment is complete and has been delivered successfully to your payee. On the dashboard, you'll see that there are more details regarding payments available. You may have to adjust the calendar, though, to find the payment you're looking for. Each payment has a drop down next to it that will include all of its additional information. And taking a look at this payment here, you'll notice that the check number is located at the bottom. This is specifically for a check payment, so that's why you see that there. If you need to place a stop payment, this is the check number that you would use. You'll notice that there are other details like the processing date and the estimated delivery date. The confirmation number here is helpful for us to use to perform further research on our side 
if you have additional questions about your payment. However, don't worry, we're still able to find payments even without this number. This confirmation number, though, is not something that you would share with the payee as it's unique to Addition Financial. Now let's take a look at how to edit a payee, which is also done from the dashboard. I was pretty sure the city of Sanford accepted electronic payments, so I was surprised that it was listed here to receive a check. So I grabbed my most recent bill and I wanted to take a look at what I had entered here for the account number and address. So when I compare my bill to what I have listed here, I see that I have the dash in the wrong spot for my account number and I also have the incorrect address and zip code. So once I update those fields, I'll select update and then you'll notice the other option here is to delete the payee and start over using the add feature. Either way, we'll update this payee and it will adjust it to an electronic payment for you. Alrighty, so we hope that you found uh, the information um, informative and that you found the webinar to be inclusive of all the questions that you may have had. Um, we are still receiving questions through the chat channel, so we are going to uh, continue answering some of them um, as time permits. Um, so one of the questions that we have is, I am looking at the scheduled payments and one of them is doubled. How do I delete a duplicate? So as long as the payment status isn't processing, uh, you can go in and delete that payment by uh, selecting the drop dropdown uh, arrow next to the payment and selecting edit or delete. The next question is, I was adding a payee, but the address listed in your bill pay is different from the paper billing statement. Is this a problem or can I change it? So typically if you're adding a payee and they're recognized as electronic, uh, there wouldn't be an address uh, as, as we just displayed in the demo. We only ask for the account number and the zip code. Uh, However, if there is a difference in address, we always recommend you update it to what is on your billing statement for sending the payments. Uh, we have little elves in the background that are double checking if the address is correct or matches with the electronic payee. Awesome. Now this one is actually really good. Not that all the other questions have not been phenomenal, but this one is like really on point because I've heard from our contact center colleagues that this is a very common question that they're getting. I had a payee that was electronic, but under the new bill pay, it shows that it's gonna be paid by mail. Yeah, so um, this has been a common question. Uh, while we're doing our best behind the scenes to go in and update any perhaps zip codes or errors in the format for the account number, the best thing you can do in those cases is to double check your billing statement like I did with my water bill and double check that I have the right format for the account number and the address or zip code. Uh, the other item is there are a lot of payees out there that have multiple names for them to send payments. You might've noticed in the Bank of America example, there was at least six options for me to choose from to pay my visa. So uh, in that case, uh, you can reach out to your payee and ask how their electronic payment name displays to get that information. Or you can do what I did, which was go through each one until I found the right combination. <laughs> Not fun, but, uh, and I wish that addition could control how everyone displays their name in the, in the payment processing, uh, electronic payment processing world, but we're at the mercy of how your, your payee has their name displayed. So is there anything that can be done to switch check payees to electronic? Uh, yeah, so if, if the payee still displays as check, we do our best to uh, encourage that particular payee to go ahead and accept electronic payments uh, from us uh, or in general, really. Um, one of them I can think of off the top of my head that seems to be a pain point uh, for, you, for our members is the city of St. Cloud. They currently do not accept uh, electronic payments in general uh, that come from a financial institution. So we continue to work with them to try to get them to transition over. For now, it's still gonna get mailed by a check. 
And as Rachel mentioned earlier, we definitely have a, a, a team behind the scenes trying furiously to convert those check payments into electronic payments uh, because it's overall a, a better experience for the recipient, for you as the person remitting the payment, um, and even for us as the, as your financial institution. Yeah, absolutely. And and it's interesting enough, um, our statistics show that almost 90% of the payments that go out are electronic. Uh, so a lot of merchants are getting on the electronic payment acceptance bandwagon. Okay. Um, are there future plans for the bill pay feature to be integrated within the app and not go to the browser? Absolutely. We're working on that right now as we speak. Okay. Is there a way to hide payees that I don't need to show us active? An, that's an interesting question. I can mark that down as something we look at uh, for an enhancement in the future. But as of today, there's not a way to hide inactive payees. The only way to hide them would be to delete them. How do you create groups? Ah, good question. So that is a new feature in our bill pay system. Um, from the dashboard or from the, the pay bills area, there is a groups function and you can select to add a group. Let's say you want to put all your utilities, <clears throat> utility payees in one group and your credit cards in another one. Uh, so it, it's pretty intuitive if you select uh, the group section, name your group, and then you should be able to add payees to it from that same function area. For the recurrent monthly payment, can I edit the date or the amount for one month only, or will that change the auto monthly date and amount? So if you edit the recurring payment, uh, any edits done to that recurring payment option changes them for all future recurring. So if there's one month you want to pay it differently and you don't want to have to log back in. Um, here's a here's a quick hack I use from time to time <laughs> is I go ahead and leave the recurring payment alone, but I go ahead and change the next send on date to the following month. And then I create a one time payment. So I'm in control of the current month of when I want to pay that. bill. That's a good trick. I learned hack from my teenage daughter. <laughs> They're all over <laughs> TikTok and <laughs> the gram, if you will. <laughs> to do the person to person, do they have to have an account with my account? If not, what is the process? Um, so you don't have to be tied to the person you're sending money to in any way other than you know who they are uh, and you you are sending them money for something that you have received. You know, I wouldn't recommend uh, sending money as a refund to the, the king of Prussia or anything like that. <laughs> Watch out for those scammers. Um, but if you have a, a relationship with someone like I do with you and you pick up the tab for me, I'm definitely going to send you money. We don't have our accounts connected in any way. We don't even have to bank at the same financial institution uh, in order to send money over. I missed the beginning of this uh, session. Do my current automatic payments need to be updated with the payee? Unclear on exactly what's asking, but again, I'll go out on the limb here and uh, take a stab at your current payees came over. And so you shouldn't have to notify your payee in any way that anything has changed because to them, they wouldn't know. They're going to get the payment the same way they did before. And do not worry about missing the beginning of the session. Um, this is being recorded and our producer, Nicole, is going to be sending to all of the um, attendees uh, a link to the webinar so you can always uh, play it at your leisure. Um, okay, so we continue to browse through the information and let's see what other... It says, you didn't cover payee groups. Please explain this feature. Uh, so if you're like me and you pay everything you ever had inside of bill pay, your list might be quite long of payees. So groups gives you uh, a way to... Uh, Put them together. Like if you wanted to have all your credit cards in one payment group, um, or if you wanted to have all of your, uh, say, auto loans or, or um, secured loans in one group, or uh, you wanted to have your utilities in another group. And what that does is when you're on the, the payment screen or any of the payment screens, it puts them into grouping. So like all your utilities will be grouped in one section and then all of your other loans will be grouped in a section or all of your cards will be grouped in a section. It's just a way to organize your payees if you're meticulous like me. 
<laughs> Someone asked about hiding inactive payees. Can you create a group of inactive payees? What? You guys are so, you're smarter than me. I love that idea. I was like, why didn't I think of that? I mean, and now I feel dumb for saying delete inactive payees. That is an excellent way to group them together <laughs> and put them at the bottom. For sure. Wow. So we are at the uh, time limit um, for this particular webinar. We know that there are many questions that have not been answered. Um, we will absolutely answer all of them um, and send those over. Um, but just know that, you know, Addition Financial is here to serve you and to continue uh, in this journey with you. So whatever additional questions you may have, you may submit it and we will uh, return uh, the information once we have gathered it and uh, are ready to share it. With that in mind, I'll turn it over to my producer, Nicole. Thank you, Nora and Rachel. This concludes our presentation this morning. Check your inboxes for an email containing a link to today's recording. And thank you all again for joining us.